Hi there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and we're going to be talking about depression and anxiety. What are the roots? What are the underlying causes of it? And what can you do to help address it in a natural way? So again, in the middle here, we have anxiety and depression. These are, these are the symptoms. So our approach to helping someone get better is a systems-based approach. What that means is we have underlying systems in the body, whether it's digestive system, hormonal system, immune system, etc. And when these systems go out of balance, we start having symptoms on one side of the equation. So conventional medicine typically lies over here treating symptoms, right? They're doing, you're giving usually medications that upregulate, I'm sorry, or downregulate or block various enzymes such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, beta blockers, benzodiazepine, which block or upregulate the GABA receptors, um, uh, proton pump inhibitors. Uh, all these different medications are about blocking physiology, not addressing the system that's imbalanced, that's causing the symptom, and not upregulating the physiology. So our goal is to go over the underlying imbalances and what we can do to upregulate physiology, but also get to the underlying system imbalance that's leading to the symptom issue. So again, we have anxiety and depression at the middle here, and let's chat about what we can do here. So nutrition is really important. So we have to have the right nutrients, certain B vitamins, um, certain amino acids such as 5-HTP or L-tryptophan, L-tyrosine. These are important amino acids that are going to produce the raw material for serotonin, uh, for dopamine, for, for GABA. A lot of these neurotransmitters help make you feel good. So it's really, really important the nutrition's there. Um, also, if we're eating foods that are devoid of nutrition, that are refined sugars and such, our body is going to use these nutrients, these B vitamins, these minerals, magnesium, things like that, to actually metabolize the sugar coming in. So you can actually produce nutrient deficiencies even further by adding all these refined sugars in because your body will take the reserve that's in there, B vitamin-wise, nutrient-wise, mineral-wise, and it will actually deplete them just to run the electron transport chain and to run the Krebs cycle or these energy pathways in which you feel good. So nutrition is really important. Again, my philosophy regarding nutrition is pretty simple. Food has to be nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory, and low in toxins. So when we look at nutrient-dense foods, organ meats, high-quality meats, ideally with good full fat in them from organic, pesticide-free, free-range sources are good. High-quality fats from egg yolks, uh, good fish oils, cod liver oil, things of that nature. Organ meats are great. They're actually one of the most nutrient-dense foods, according to most studies. And then obviously getting most of your carbohydrates from non-starchy vegetables because you get lots of nutrition without a lot of sugar. And if you're going to add more sugar into your diet, you're much better off getting it from lower glycemic fruits like berries, grapefruit, lemon, limes, green apples, things that are on the lower glycemic side. And if you're more active and if you're already pretty healthy, it's safe to add in some of the healthy, safe starches, sweet potatoes, yams, starchy tubers, and maybe adding in some higher glycemic fruits if you're healthy and if you're more active. So nutrition is really important. Uh, at least three good solid meals a day and about half, half of your lean body weight and protein. So if I, I'm weight 200 pounds, so let's say my lean body mass is about 160 pounds or 165. So I should be having at least 90 grams of protein per day. That's, that's my personal recommendation. If you're more active, I would even go up to one gram per pound of lean body mass. So if I'm 160 lean weight, take 40 off from 200, I'm at 160, so I should be looking at closer to 160 grams of protein if I'm more active, if I'm doing CrossFit, if I'm under a lot of stress, so keep that in mind. Adrenals and blood sugar are really important. As your blood sugar wobbles up and down throughout the day due to poor diet, each drop here, our body has to produce things known as catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, or adrenaline is the conventional term. So if you feel the butterflies on a roller coaster you get, that's adrenaline. But again, if your blood sugar is up and down throughout the day, when that blood sugar drops, you have to make adrenaline right here to bring that blood sugar back up. And a lot of people that wake up in the middle of the night, it's because your blood sugar is dropping and adrenaline has to come to the rescue. So again, adrenals and blood sugar are really important. And your adrenals are the main organ in which the adrenaline is coming from. And then second to the scene after the adrenaline is going to be your cortisol. Cortisol is what's going to sustain that blood sugar up in the long term. And cortisol, again, if it's out of balance, it's going to cause thyroid problems. It's going to cause leaky gut problems. It's going to create more stress uh, in the long run if 
If your adrenals are continue to be stressed, your body's going to eventually break down faster than it builds up. So you're in an accelerated aging path, and our goal is to fix the adrenals so we can get you more on an anti-aging path. Digestion is really important, really important. So we looked at adrenals and blood sugar, we looked at nutrition and digestion. So it's really important. The old adage, you are what you eat, not necessarily true. You are what you eat, digest, assimilate and utilize. So you actually have to break down that food, assimilate it, absorb it in through your microvilli so your body can use it. So if we have digestion problems, if we have low HCL, we tend to automatically have low enzymes. And if we have low enzymes, we also typically have low bile salts because HCL production is really, really important for the trigger of bile. So again, how digestion works is again, we have this nice low acidic pH in the stomach. That's going to keep bacteria content down. That's going to keep um, foreign invaders from coming in. That's going to then create a nice acidic pH. So when that food or that chyme is then introduced into the small intestine, that low pH is going to trigger bile release and pancreatic enzyme release. So if we have low HCL, we're automatically going to have decreased enzymes and decreased bile salts. And the food's going to sit, ferment, and putrefy and rancidify and create all kinds of problems known as SIBO. We'll start to have GERD potentially. And we also open ourselves up to infections if we are missing this protective barrier in the body. So that's a really, really important thing. Next, exercise. So what does exercise do? Well, exercise is a couple of things that are really important. If you're doing the right kinds of exercise, high intensity, Tabata style, interval, burst style, if you're doing some type of circuit training resistant wise, maybe a CrossFit, if you can handle it, if your adrenals are strong enough, I'll have a second video on that later. But again, exercise is a couple things. It's going to increase growth hormone. And that's really important. Growth hormone is going to help uh, allow your body to tap into fat for fuel. It's going to allow you to put on more muscle. It's also going to increase beta endorphin. I'm going to just abbreviate that, beta endorphin. Beta endorphin is really important. It's our body's natural antidepressant. A lot of runners will, will run and do lots of marathon training because they get that runner's high. That's beta endorphin release. And beta endorphins actually, to make it in your body, it's actually 19 amino acids to make it. So you can see if we have digestion issues with low HCL and or we're not getting enough good quality food in our body, we're automatically going to have problems with these 19 amino acids and we're going to have problems making our own natural antidepressants. So that's a really important concept. System-based approach, if this system's off and that system's off, well, exercise may not provide the benefit that most people get. So that's really important to keep in mind. So we want to make sure we're addressing all systems, not just one system. Last but not least, detox and infections. This is really important. So I'm going to put a slide up on screen right now overlapping me so you see it. But what this slide is showing here is that lipopolysaccharide, that's the outer wall of gram-negative bacteria. So gram-negative bacteria is the worst kind of bacteria. How it looks is this. It has two cell walls. So we have cell wall number one, and then we have cell wall number two. So the way I kind of look at this is, Imagine a castle, right? This is like the drawbridge to the castle here. And then this is like the castle wall. So there's two layers of entry to get to that gram-negative bacteria. So if we want to start killing that gram-negative bacteria, let's say with, with various herbs or nutrients or maybe even antibiotics, I'm going to just write herbs and I'll write antibiotics abbreviated, that has to penetrate two, two barrier means here. So imagine we're trying to invade the castle. We have to get over the moat, and then we have to scale the castle wall. So there's two barriers of entry. Now the outer, the outer wall, the moat, if you will, in research, that's known as lipopolysaccharide, LPS, or endotoxin for short. So you heard it right. The last part is toxin, meaning it is hepatotoxic. It is toxic to your liver and to your detoxification systems. And research shows that LPS, this lipopolysaccharide, can literally create leaky gut, and it can also create major depressive disorders according to the research. That these issues, these infections, can create all kinds of problems and create mood issues, depression, and potentially create anxiety. So 
that's kind of what the research is saying. So if you have an infection like this, which is very, very common, it could be an Enterobacter infection, it could be a Citrobacter, H. pylori, um, the list goes on, that this could be the, the major cause of your depression or anxiety. And the literature is pretty keen on it. It even says that you need to get your leaky gut fixed. So addressing the leaky gut, this could be one of the core parts of the leaky gut is the hidden infection. And most people never make that infection connection. So now looking at what you can do, obviously action items over here, one of the first things that we can do, so you can see that, is address the infection. All right, next thing is stabilize the blood sugar. So blood sugar. Do some of the exercise things that we already talked about. Now supplements, there's some things that you can do as well. There are some adaptogenic herbs. One of my favorite are going to be ashwagandha and rhodiola. These are excellent herbs. Rhodiola, I spelled that wrong, but that's close enough. So again, these are your action items, ashwagandha, rhodiola, bl blood sugar. And again, getting the infection addressed are going to be really, really important things that you can do very simply. Also, another one for anxiety and depression is going to be fish oil and also magnesium. These are really, really simple, simple, simple things that you can just add in off the bat that you'll get significant benefit regarding. Again, if you have a serious depression issue, go see your medical doctor. We want to make sure that's managed first. But in the long run, we want to get to the actual root issue, the system-based issue, not the symptom-based. So I hope this information kind of gave you some good action items to move forward on. Uh, for more information about myself, feel free and check below the video and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Have a good day.